Hey, here we are. I often get asked where I find my guests. And the truth is all over the place. Obviously, social media is one avenue. Although I've used other online platforms and, uh, and some of it's been through my own personal network of folks. I have discovered, uh, well, not really discovered, I've found uh, artists and, uh, and a now disgraced politician, surprise, surprise, on uh, Twitter, um, a somewhat famous musician on Facebook. But some of my most interesting guests have, that I've encountered have, have come from LinkedIn of all sources. I used to think of LinkedIn as just a, a resume site, but it, uh, it's certainly evolved to a lot more. And that's how I came across Mariah Edgington's biography. She's my guest today. What struck me first is how her bio began. Instead of immediately touting her credentials as an integrative RN healthcare coach or a, as a writer, she starts with what she believes in, which is, and I quote, I am a believer in living a life filled with gratitude. Leaving the campsite better than I found it. I, I love that when I was hooked already when I read that. Um, the importance of helping others in this world being optimistic, positive, kind, and respectful to each other, spreading happiness and joy wherever I can, the value of knowing you've been heard. I was sold right away when I read that. Um, these are all sentiments that are echoed here on this podcast, so it is a delight to welcome you and learn from you, Mariah Edgington. Thank you so much for having me today, Mark. It's my pleasure. Excellent. Uh, I want to begin with something you say on your profile, and I, I've heard you say in some YouTube videos, you encourage people to own your value. Tell us more about that. What, what do you mean? I have found through, I was a registered nurse for many years, and one thing that was across the board is people feel the need to deflect their own value a lot of times. And I want people to know that they can step in to their own knowledge that they are worthy. And now, especially more so even during the pandemic, that there was a lot of mental health issues where people were really depressed because for whatever reason they had coming into it, being isolated with that social isolation they had, it was a bigger problem. And so I found that when I started posting on LinkedIn, there was a real need for people to understand it was okay to reach out to somebody else. It was okay to be a little bit vulnerable and say, hey, I need help, or I really don't know what to do. I'm kind of struggling. Many people, you know this, they lost their jobs and they didn't have money and they were terrified of ending up with COVID. And that's where it all started was because I was just trying to reach out to people, to let them know that it's something that we all struggle with, but we need to stand into our own value and know that we are enough to be, we are worthy basically to be alive. So yeah. your, uh, your words, in fact, uh, uh, potentially thwarted a, a suicide attempt, right? I mean, there's, there's yeah. something you mentioned about that. Can, can you talk about that or what happened? Well, that was interesting because one of the things I do is I just encourage people to go ahead and reach out to somebody. And like I said, in my profession, it was very comfortable for me to sit down on somebody's bed and talk with them and really get personal with them because that's a nursing role. But for most people, they're uncomfortable talking about anything like that. It just seems like, oh, if I reach out and call somebody because I feel like their name came into my head and I should call them, that they're gonna think I'm weird. But one thing I do, do and have done frequently is just say, hey guys, reach out to somebody today. If their name pops into your head, call them or text them or something. And then I did have someone call me or actually direct message me and thank me for this because they found out the person that they reached out to had told them they had it planned on ending their own life. Wow. And so when that happened, I went ahead and posted that on my page again and let other people know how critical it was that that person saved a life yeah. and it was very impactful and it's very gratifying to know that in social media 
we have a responsibility to step up and start saying, Hey, you guys, let's, let's be there for each other. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you, you put that there because even reading it was a uh, kind of inspiration to me, you know, to, to do that, even reading that that had happened, you know, it was like, you know, that's now kind of in my mind, like, Hey, if I, you know, um, if I'm thinking of somebody or uh, maybe I just hadn't checked in with somebody in a while, you know, I should do that just to check in, say hi, see how people are doing. Um, yeah. That, that's and awesome. I think another thing people think of is not only will I feel awkward if I say you just popped into my mind, but what if I'm too busy to talk to them for a long period of time? And, and I also want people to know that it's okay to preface it. Hey, I only got a couple minutes here. Right. Just wanted to say hi, let you know, I was thinking of you. Right. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome advice. I think I wish more people would do that. <laughs> um, so you, you also, you write for a website called biz catalyst 360. Well, uh, tell us more about the site and, uh, and what kind of, uh, a subject matter you write about. Well, the site itself offers so many different types of writing and videos and poetry and photos. So it's a real resource. And the gentleman who started it has what he calls an occupation for it, for writing and writers. And so I'm real fortunate because he's posted several of, of the things I've written. Mostly I write about owning your own value and, and how we can step up and be there for each other. Mm. But I've also written some pieces on advanced directives and uh, health care and also about end of life type subjects. So, yeah, I, uh, I used to, um, I was a graduate teaching uh, assistant at Florida state university and I was in the religion studies department, but we, i I taught a class called death and dying. Um, so in really only about a third of that had to do with religious perspectives of what happens after death and dying. But uh, we talked a lot about advanced directives and uh, you know, end of life decisions. And um, yeah, it's, it's more, I think people don't, uh, if it's not in their life, they don't think about it or, you know, maybe death is an uncomfortable topic for them or something and they just avoid it until, you know, it happens. So, you know, so there's something, in close proximity with them, they lose a family member or something like that. And it's really stuff that you should think about now. <laughs> ahead Absolutely. Of That's interesting that you taught a class in that. Yeah. So, uh, actually, for, I did pretty well, I guess, because I kept getting assigned that one. Like as a graduate teaching assistant, they'll give you like, you know, like I did world religions, you know, one semester. I was there six semesters. And another one I did like philosophy of religion. But then the for four times, I guess my student evaluations were were high on that class so four times I taught death and dying that's a very interesting topic too isn't it there's so many directions you can go with that I learned so much I, I Mariah I can't even tell you like because at that time I mean I was a young guy then you know, I'm in my mid-40s now but I was in my early 20s still then and working on an MA at Florida State and I had really um you know, ironically, because I'm teaching this class, I had not actually been touched with death uh, in almost any way. I didn't have any family members, no friends. You know, n by now, of course, I've encountered it many, many times. But that teaching that class prepared me like, you know, nothing else has. When my grandfather passed, I, you know, because we taught a week on like even preparation with funeral homes and, you know, that right. to, to realize that funeral homes, I mean, I'm not going to say anything uh, to discredit what they do but but to realize they're a business too and they're in it to exactly. make money and <laughs> exactly right yeah so I was a little bit more prepared to deal with that stuff when that happened and then um, you know just other end of life decisions that people have to make and and it it opened my eyes to um, you know physician assisted suicide topics like that that I'd never mm -hmm. really thought about you know and right. had and had much of an opinion on, which I do have an opinion on now, but, uh, um, yeah, anyway, I could go Can on and we on. Can segue into that, right? Yeah, well, I mean, we could talk about anything you want. Um, you know, I think it's crazy that we, and, you know, it's just my opinion, and it's only worth two, two cents, two yen, but, uh, you know, I think it's crazy that we don't allow 
you know, humane assisted ways of departing this life on our own terms. It's a shame that there, you know, uh, that people want to impose their own personal sort of morality on the way all of us should, <laughs> you know, have choices at the end of our lives. And, um, but, uh, I think we run up against that in a lot of areas of our you, lives. You we that. live in a society that's politically polarized and you not got. having. And it is that. more these days than ever before, not only in my lifetime, but even as a historian, I look back at like, I mean, there were always like contentious elections and there's always, you know, uh, finger pointing at the other party or whatever, but it's just, w America is certainly more polarized than ever before in its history. I mean, to a point that it's, you know, it feels like it's dangerous to our ongoing democracy. <laughs> so. yeah, well, yeah, we saw that in January now. Exactly. Okay. Uh, shifting gears here. Um, you know, usually I do like a, a bio in chronological order, but we're kind of going in reverse today. Did, did you grow up this way uh, as, with a positive mindset and, and knowing own your own value? Were you always a positive person? What, you know, where did this come from? Well, I say I'm a recovering Catholic, but <laughs> that's kind of a stretch because when I was a child, I never quite fit in. And the, in Catholicism, people go through a ritual of something called confession where they, I don't know what the whole thing is exactly. But when I was to do that, I told the priest that I didn't believe in that because I didn't have anything to confess. And that whole thing <laughs> was not really real. And from then on, that just kind of set the tone of my relationship with the Catholic Church and my parents. So um, that said, I have always had this kind of out there feeling that there was more to life than just what we have here. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't ever explain it. And then probably 20 some years ago, I went to move to the island of Kauai in Hawaii. And I realized, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm part of this. I felt like I'd come home. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of time in the water while I was there. And very spiritual place and since then i had a, a long journey of kind of back to owning that spiritual side and that kind of comfort that comes with not a religion per se but i would have to say a spiritual side and and that's how i've wandered into this it kind of met up with my nursing and i was able to touch more people than i could even imagine nice um a, a sort of mysticism maybe i mean i don't want to put a label yeah. on it but yeah no you're right there's there is more to that it's there is a lot of the kind of a just allowing some buddhism kind of theories and like you said the mysticism and hmm. and just just the kind of comforting i'll give you a little story that was interesting i did a lot of holistic different kind of therapies and one of them is reiki one of them is um, aromatherapy and i volunteered for hospice and inevitably when i go in to give people who were in the either near death or eminently dying some holistic therapies and their families would be there and almost always their families would say oh you're and they assign me their religious belief <laughs> whatever it was right whatever it was wow, and cool. i was comfortable enough to own that spirituality hmm. where i was just okay with what they were saying i and i wasn't speaking because i was actively giving the holistic therapy to the dying person so allowing the family to feel that way was an honor yeah that showed that I was able to bring that spiritual side, no matter what it was, because when you look back at all the different kinds of spirituality and the leaders that once were mm -hmm. getting back to those real principles that they taught, that's almost the same across the board. You got that right. And in fact, you know, I, uh, you know, uh, there's the, 
the analogy of, oh, these are different paths up the same mountain that lead to the top. That Many times they really are, you know, they use different language or whatever. But if you get to the core of what, whether it's Christianity, which would say, love your neighbor and, you know, uh, you know, there's no greater than he that would, or she that would uh, lay down her life or his life for another, you know, or uh, whether it's Buddhism, uh, you know, the, the, the tenets of compassionism or compassion. And, you know, these are all, it's, it's where people get involved and build religions and, and dogma that it all gets convoluted and, you know, exactly. Right. But the, the totally message, agree with you. yeah, the message in, in <laughs> most of these traditions is good. You know, if, if right. you just follow the message and don't get into the politics of the religion. So to right. Speak. You remove hypocrisy from everything and it changes it all. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, you, you're in Iowa now. You just mentioned you lived in Hawaii. I know that you, you lived for a little while in, in Colombia, in Medellin, right? And uh, mm-hmm. so you're basically a world traveler. Where, where all have you been? <laughs> what, what sticks out? I haven't been a lot of places, but I have a lot of places to go yet, too. So yeah. I need to, I haven't been to Japan. I've heard there's some interesting people living there. So maybe I should get over there and check <laughs> it out, too. You, should, you certainly should. Uh, is there any place in particular, though, that like uh, your travels or whether you've lived there or just just visited that that always sticks out in your mind? Is Well, I I would love to. I just commune so well with the island of Kauai that Hawaii just will probably always own my heart, just a little piece of it. And for some reason, I love the ocean. Mm. So somewhere by the oceans where I'll probably live in subtle someday, but. A lot of traveling to do yet. It was interesting because I had a a marked birthday um, in 2020, and I didn't get to go to where I was going to go to the Galapagos for it. Oh, wow. Nice. I know. Of course. Yeah. You know, the pandemic. Same. My wife. Yeah. um, I didn't mean to cut you off there. My uh, my wife and I, um, you know, we got married at the end of 2019, and we had a... um, a somewhat delayed honeymoon uh scheduled for may of 2020 oh no oh yeah we had tickets to go to australia and i was gonna uh learn to scuba dive on the great barrier reef like uh, you know, it was just all planned out and of course all of it the flights got canceled all we got you know so uh, that's yeah. fine you know uh it is what it is it is what it is like you know life goes on um well uh we're we're coming to the uh the end here uh on every episode, I do a little segment called Five Minutes Zen, and we, we don't have to talk about Zen philosophy or anything, but I really I try to just give the listener uh, some kind of practical advice on day-to-day, you know, how, how can they apply five minutes of mindfulness and gratitude into their own life, um, and I know that you are a promoter of positivity and compassion and gratitude. Uh, and these are all wonderful, and I support the same mental focus. But what do you do specifically, whether it's meditation or prayer or simply taking a walk, to rechannel your energy when life is hard or the news you see on TV or, or online is depressing or some family tragedy, big or small, occurs? On a down-to-earth level, Mariah, what do you do to counterbalance the, the inherent negativity that exists in the world? That's a really good question, Mark. And there's a lot of it. (laughs) So when something hits home and is hard, initially, most day-to-day things, if something hits that's kind of like, oh, overwhelming or just too much, I'm able to pretty quickly just take a breath, step back, kind of reframe it and be grateful and go on. But if it's something big, and for example, recently a friend of mine's husband was killed and it was totally out of the blue and just kind of took the wind out of my sails more than usual. And so at that point, I did have to just allow myself to grieve a little. Maybe normally I would just take a few minutes and flip my mindset to positivity. But I think giving yourself the grace to lean into something that's really painful, Mm. that can be helpful to do instead of saying, oh, I need to start being happy right now, or I need to do be grateful or whatever. 
And so I did. I, I took a day, which is unusual for me, and kind of sorted out my feelings. And I didn't, I don't get into despair because I've been doing this work so long that I can know how to step in and be pretty much even keeled on stuff. But I did allow myself that extra time that I took it and really brought it back, did some gratitude within of being happy for the time I'd had with them. Mm. But still, that it is tough. And so if anybody says, well, you, you should just be happy or flip it over and try to be happy. And, and I do want to say that that's not always possible mm. and it's not always practical. So allow yourself that extra little time. If you need a day, if you need a few days, or if you need to reach out and get some professional help, make sure you do the things that you can do that are helpful is try to think of things that you have done well mm. that are going okay that make a difference in your life and just move through those difficult times as yeah best you can. yeah I, I i agree I, i've talked before on this show before about surrender and uh, and acceptance and you know, I, I've mentioned on the program before that my mom passed last year. You know, obviously that was a sad uh, moment, and it still is. Um, it, but instead of trying to suppress it, not think about it, or you know, I, if I get sad about it, I allow. I, I don't dwell on it, on the sadness or, or or anything, but I acknowledge it. You know, oh, I'm a little sad. Right. I'm a little, you know, about that, I acknowledge it. You know, and instead of fighting it or trying to, you know stuff it in a box, I allow myself to feel a little sad. And, and the, it's sort of weird that the moment that I kind of surrender to it and accept it, it, it kind of goes, I don't want to say it goes away entirely, but it, it makes it okay. You know? Yeah, it does. You're right. It makes it easier. And some people find it uh, therapeutic, I should say, to write it out. Mm. For some reason, that kinesthetic motion of moving your hand or or even if some people like to walk and they kind of talk it out or something like that, those are very good things, like you said, when you surrender to it and not try to push it in a box. Yeah. Yeah, I just did an episode on, on uh, creativity or creating things. And I mean, that's a perfect, you know, I, one of the things I'd mentioned, I mean, you don't have to be an artist or a poet, you know, grab a journal, you know, write something in there. And, right. uh, yeah. I think it's help. It helps. Um, well, Mariah, where can uh, someone? Uh, I know you did just recently start a YouTube channel. Um, so since you just started it, and I'm I'm still in the same boat on this. Uh, you know, there's not like a nice little custom URL. It's not like you you know YouTube.com no, slash Mariah. It's, know, it's like it's a true. series. So I, we can't. I'll put a link in the notes, but you know, it's too long to just uh, to yeah, mention. I know. It. Uh, how can they find you? They can find you on LinkedIn, I guess. Yes, both on LinkedIn and on the YouTube channel. And I'm like you a little bit where I'm learning social media. I'm not <laughs> not gotten into it a whole lot, yeah. but I think you have to do that eventually to to do get into social media. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had to for this podcast, like to to market it and, and to find interesting people like yourself. Um, but and, you know, and social media is a double-edged sword. By me getting into it, um, I, I did come into contact with people I have not talked to in 30 years. And some of that has been a joy. You know, it's been a pleasure to reconnect with those folks. But then if I spend too much time on social media, you know, and right. usually my focus is only on, like, promoting the podcast or something. But if I spend too much time, I see the to toxicity that's there and, Right. bickering and just negative stuff. And I, I gotta, yeah, I tell well, people. Well, I have yeah. to admit, I do not do Facebook. I, I am starting to because I know I need to, <laughs> but I'm like you, it's, it's surprising how people pick at each other. Yeah. Twitter. <laughs> don't even bother with Twitter. I mean, I, I, I'm there <laughs> because I have to be so to speak, but, uh, wow. Uh, well, even the Twitter people will like, kind of admit the 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 toxicity that's there i mean people just it, it gets crazy and i told someone the other day i'm like you know it, it's like booze maybe a shot of it every now and then is okay but don't you know don't overdo it 
yeah. you, know, you, you it'll mess you up. So uh, anyway, that's my two yen on, on, on social media. Um, all right. Well, I'll put those links in the show so that anybody that listens to this, they can, they can find you on LinkedIn and YouTube because uh, Mariah does have a very positive message. And I think that people should, uh, should hear it. And I'll put a link as well to biz catalyst 360. Uh, it is a pretty interesting site. I just started looking at it today, but, um, I I'm going to take a look at it again because it, it, there's a lot of pe- positive messages and imagery there. And I, I think people should see that. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking with you and meeting you, Mark. It was really nice to get acquainted with you. Yeah, we'll stay in touch. Uh, we might see each other in Hawaii. My, uh, my wife and I talk about if we ever leave Japan, where are we going? I'm like, well, we're going to Hawaii if we go to Hawaii. So <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Uh, well, that's it. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, you can help us out by going to patreon.com slash zansamich. Uh, Everything that goes there uh, goes back into the podcast and you can help out for as little as three bucks. If you do, I will send you a handmade on Japanese paper called washi that my wife and I make a handmade postcard personalized from me to you, wherever you are in the world. Thanks again, Mariah. Uh, I enjoyed it. You're, you're a pleasure to talk to. You're sort of a calming influence. I had like too many cups of coffee before we started and uh, (laughs) it's all good. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. All right, take care.